welcome back today we will be talking about another tool which is more uh, describe you know which is just going to describe uh, about our upper arm okay so the name of the tool is assessment of repetitive task of the upper limb that is art tool again this tool is given or introduced by health and safety executive which assess the task that requires repetitive movement of the upper limb okay it helps in assessing some of the common risk factors in repetitive work that contribute to the development of upper limb disorder this particular tool is very useful to the employers safety representatives health and safety practitioners consultants and of course ergonomist so this tool is going to assess the risks or hazards which is going to present in any workplace condition where upper arm or arm is associated with any kind of repetitive movement so repetitive tasks are made up of a sequence of upper limb actions of fairly short duration now here you may ask what is the kind of short duration i am talking about therefore i suggest that ia has given a definition of repetitive task you should follow the definition of repetitive task given by ia which are repeated over and over again and are almost always the same so art is most suited for task that involves actions of the upper limb repeat every few minutes or even more frequently occur for at least 1 to 2 hours per day of a particular shift so if these conditions are present then we can use this particular tool art this particular assessment is you know uh, split it into four major stages first stage talks about uh, frequency and repetition of movement second stage that is the stage b talks about force then next is awkward posture that is the stage c and the additional factor that is the stage d these are the color uh, coding that we are going to use i believe you remember the color coding what we used for msc similar color coding is being used here as well g that is the green we are also we call it as low level of risk a amber or medium level that is the examine the task closely so okay there is some risk so you examine it and r that is the red or high level of risk you need to have a prompt action as soon as you get this results okay so this is the color coding we are going to use this particular tool now let us understand one by one we are talking about frequency and repetition so assessment of repetitive task of the upper limb and we are talking about the frequency and repetition here you have some factors first is your arm movement or we will call it as a1 okay so these a1 b1 c1 all these terminologies that you know that coding you need to remember or you need to use it as it is uh, described in this tool because the uh, flow chart or the data collection chart follows the same nomenclature okay so you you cannot do the changes so you have to say that capital a1 you cannot write it as small a1 or uh, maybe x1 b1 no not like that you have to use the same num uh, nomenclature that is uh, present in the tool what a1 is or r movement is r movement is categorized into three major area that is green amber and red both for left hand and right hand you have a definition so infrequent some intermittent movement so then it is zero frequent uh, regular movement with some pauses then it is three 
value is 3 and color is amber and very frequent that is the almost continuous movement value is 6 and uh, color is red. So, observe the movement of the arm for a particular shift for a particular duration and from there you should have this particular scoring system or scoring value. Under stage A you have arm movement and you are talking about repetition. So, frequency and repetition right. So, now here we are talking about 10 times per minute or less than that then for both arm uh, left and right it is 0 color is green 11 to 20 times per minute that is value is 3 and color is amber and more than 20 times per minute that is color is red and value is 6. So, what we are talking about similar motion pattern of the arm and hand which is going to repeat over and over again. Now, the second stage is all about force. Here also you have some kind of category and definition. So, you have four major categories light force, moderate force, strong force and very strong force and you have description of these categories. Light force talk about there is no indication of any particular effort. Okay? Moderate force talks about force needs to be exerted. Strong force, force is obviously high, strong or heavy and very strong is force is near to maximum level uh, that the worker can apply. So, you can have the color uh, and the values. So, if we are talking about infrequent then it is the G0 ok moderate uh, green and then it is a combination. So, workers description of the for, uh, level of force extended with a particular hand. So, how part of the time 10, 15 to 20, 30 percent about half of the time they are exerting then 40 to 60 percent almost all the time that is the more than 80 percent then it is the value is uh, you have to calculate. So, here everything is green that is G0, A1, A2, A4, R8 ok that is the moderate and then R6, R9, R12. So, this is this is like the kind of coding ok. So, you can see if it is infrequent and light then G is 0 part of the time then it is G0 whereas if you are the part of the time but moderate then value is A2. So, so using this particular matrix you have to decide that for force what value you have. So, first what you do first you have to select what is the kind of force they are going to use and then you have to see at what frequency they are using it based on the amount of force and based on the frequency of utilization of the force you will get the force value ok value and color. Now awkward posture. Now awkward posture for your head and neck and also for trunk. So, you can see that how the description from the uh, you know uh, photograph you can see in an almost natural or neutral posture then it is 0 bent or twisted part of the time then it is 1 and bent or twisted more than half of the time then it is 2. For back also similar kind of definition and you can see how it is being described ok. Bent is forward bending, twisting uh, is on this side left side or right side or bending is also left side and right side. So, you can have the value. So, here it is mentioned the back posture is considered awkward if more than 20 degree of twisting or bending is observed. Okay. So, this is only a gross identification of your posture. Also, you have arm posture. So, kept 
closer to the body or it is supported then for left and right it is zero raised away from the body part of the time then it is two and raised away from the body more than uh, half of the time then it is four so observe the elbow position and give this particular scoring now is arm posture it is done now is wrist posture wrist posture again talks about almost straight in a neutral position bent or deviated part of the time and bent or deviated more than half of the time so 0 1 2 both left and right hand hand and grip uh, grip so power grip do not grip awkwardly then it is 0 pinch or wide finger uh, grip for part of the time then 1 pinch or wide finger grip for more than half of the time then it is 2. So, the similar kind of rating that you do for other scoring. So, here also you can say you can see the example this is very easy to hold whereas if you are talking about holding this it takes lot of pressure right. So, that is why this is on the higher side. So, this is C5. So, under C you have C1, C2, C3 and C5. We need to consider some additional factors in this particular, uh, uh, particular uh, tool. First is we will be denoting all these uh, other factors as D and first factor that is the break we will be taking it as D1. So, what it says 0 means less than 1 hour or there are frequent short breaks every few minutes over the whole period then it is 0. 1 hour to less than 2 hours 2, 2 to less than 3 hours then 4, 3 hours to less than 4 hours it is 6 and more than 4 hours then it is 8 ok. So, this is all about break. Now, these are all other factors you had consi you consider the break now you are talking about the work pace at what pace you are working not difficult to keep up with the work so zero sometimes difficult to keep it up with the work then it is one and often difficult to keep up with the work then it is two so, interact with the workers about uh, any difficulties they might have keeping up with that particular work. So, this particular information you should gather from the worker. Some more factors if you see some more interrupting factor or influencing factor is present uh, or no, nothing is present then 0 if 1 factor then 1 if 2 or more factors then it is 2. Here we need to see observe for the other factors that is the hand arm are exposed to the vibration or not, inadequate lighting or not, gloves affect, affecting that gripping or not or any similar kind of interrupting factors ok. So, from the observation you can decide on. So, that is the other factors. Last is D4 that is the duration. Here you have a multiplier. If less than 2 hours this whole thing is happening then multiplier is 0 0.5, 2 to 4 then 0 0.75, 4 to 8 then 1 and more than 8 it is 1.5. So, this you need to see from your observation. So, what it says the observe the time that a worker performs the repetitive task in a typical day or shift excluding the break because break you considered earlier as a D1 factor. Now, this is D4. So, if you consider again break it will be repetition right. So, you are excluding the break and then you are uh, getting these timing included ok. So, this is the multiplier. 
नेक्स्ट इज डी फाइव दैट इज दी साइकोफिजिकल फैक्टर सो साइकोफिजिकल फैक्टर्स आर नॉट गिवेन एनी काइंड ऑफ स्कोर इट इज ओनली अ कंसिडरेशन दे शुड बी रिकॉर्डेड ऑन द स्कोर शीट बेस्ड ऑन द ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड डिस्कशन विद द वर्कर सो इट इज नॉट हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ स्कोरिंग सिस्टम ओके सो इट इज ओनली टू रिपोर्ट इन द होल प्रोसेस नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड how the score sheet can be calculated and how you will use this particular scores so if you are talking about a particular task so before starting this particular method you have to select a task and you have to give the scoring so the task score will be all the addition of the values the scores that we uh, know given during our data collection so a1 plus a2 plus b plus c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 plus d1 d2 plus d3 so all these values that you are you know the the scores that you have collected during your data collection or ticked in your data collection you have to sum it up okay so that is all about the task score whereas exposure score is the multiplication of the duration multiplier with the task score so whatever task score you are getting here you need to multiply that task score with the duration multiplier that is the exposure score and this particular exposure score only we are going to understand or interpret using the uh no uh, the scale okay using that particular scale we have a scale so let us understand this scale so exposure score uh, if it is 0 to 11 then uh, we we say the exposure level is low and consider individual circumstances so maybe uh, there are some values which is causing little higher so maybe at that individual level you can check and you can give the small solution if it is 12 to 21 we will be calling at medium and further investigation is required interpretation says that further inv investigation required and if it is more than 22 or 22 then it is high so you should start the investigation immediately okay so that is the interpretation of the scores which we are getting over here okay so that is how we interpret the art tool so this is how the score sheet look like uh, you can give the color values here and score values here so you can get the total value here you can get the multiplier then you get the exposure score and only the psychophysical factors you can mention here you just mention it okay there is no scoring for psychosocial factors this is how the flow chart will look like so you can either use this if you remember but i suggest you use this for your data collection and once you collect data you use this score uh, sheet to calculate the score value okay so this is how you should know you, you you will get everything here here okay so that is also possible this is very easy okay very very easy tool and uh, easy to learn easy to implement okay so that's all for this tool uh, you can see the advantages and disadvantages are quite similar as for our you no know, msc tool like you know uh, wherever you have a param which is involved uh, with repetitive task you can use this tool whereas if you have any tool which is not connected to you know your repetition is not there for your upper arm then you cannot use this tool also uh, learning time is very sh uh, short so anybody who is having minimum understanding of ergonomics they can collect the data however for interpretation and further intervention you need detailed understanding of ergonomics that's all for art okay so we will take this particular tool rapp in our next class thank you mm -hmm.